All right, so last one, lesson 24, logarithmic and exponential equations and applications of it. Okay, so the difference here now is we're actually gonna be solving these things. And, and I said in the last one, right, that when you've got you know, X's up in the exponent, we didn't really have the, the mathematical ability to solve for them very well. You know, we could, have, we could have, you can always graph it, right? We could have made that F1 and that side F2 and, or Y1 and Y2 and then figured out where they cross, like that'll always work. But now with, with uh, using logarithms, we can actually solve this um, algebraically. So here, here's how we're gonna do it. I gotta get those X's out of the exponent, right? And this is why we're, we're gonna be able to use logs to do this. So if I, just for a second, write this as instead, log of four, oh, four to the power of X. And, and then, so I'm gonna take a log of both sides. So log of, and then five to the power of X minus two. Now, I made these things, they're, they're log base 10. It actually doesn't matter what base you use. So if I don't write anything, then it's implied that I'm using log base 10. Either way, it doesn't actually matter. But now that I've taken the log of both sides, it's kind of like, you know, multiplying by two on both sides, right? You can take the log of both sides of the equation. Um, well, now that I have it set up this way, here's the magic that's gonna happen. I can now use my log law of, you know, the log of an exponent it can be written with that X down out front. So as soon as I'm able to move these things down um, and out of the exponent, now I can do algebra like, like normal, right? So if I write this out a little different now, this will be X times log four is equal to, and now this will be X minus two, really in brackets, times log of five. All right, so now, just remember, because I think the kids get lost in this quite a lot, is that, that, that log base four, even though it looks confusing and it's new, that's just a number. So whenever in doubt, treat that like any other number, right? That'd be the same thing if that was like X times four or anything else. So we're, gonna, we're gonna do algebra to it the exact same way, right? So, so now, uh, what we're gonna do here is, well, first thing, I just like as if this was a number, like log base five, because that is just a number, we are gonna get rid of these brackets and we're gonna expand it into both of those. So here, we'll write it again. That'll be X times log four is equal to, and then this will be X times log five. And then the second part of the distri distribution would be minus two log five. Okay, so now, now, this is kind of the new part. And this part like, it is a little bit tricky sometimes. The kids forget about it, maybe. How am I going to do this? Well, if, you know, it's probably worth me writing down. You, you guys don't need to write this down, but let, let's just write this a little different. If this was my situation, like I had 2x is equal to, I don't know, let's say like 3x minus 4, right? Can you guys see that that's actually kind of similar? I've got like, you know, some number times X, that's like the two X. And then I've got like some number times X, that's like the three X and then just minus some. And then this is all just a number, right? So like four, right? I feel like your guys' mathematical ability is good enough to solve for X in a situation like this, right? So what you would do is you would, you know, get X on the same side. So maybe you'd subtract three X from both sides, right? We're going to handle it the same way. Right, we're gonna do the same thing, but it just it's gonna look a little funny, but it's all the same stuff. So then what we're gonna do is I, I'm gonna get my X terms on the same side. So I'm going to subtract X or you know X log five from both sides of the equation. So it'd be like minus X log five. Okay, so both sides of the equations. Now let's like clean it up a little bit. This would be X log four minus the thing I just brought over, x log five, and that's equal to what's still over there. So negative two log five. All right, now this part, normally what you would do is you would just collect like terms, wouldn't you? If you had like two x and maybe that was minus three x or something, you just collect like terms. 
it's not so nice collecting like terms with these logs because they're, they're going to be funny numbers, right? They're not going to be like a nice integer. So what we're going to do instead, a little, little trick here, is I'm going to factor out the X. Okay, so I'm going to factor it out as X, right? Because they both have an X. So I factor the X out. And then I'm going to start a bracket and write what I have left. So I'm going to have left in there just the log 4 minus the log 5. And then that's all equal to negative 2 log 5. Okay. Now, very last step, I want X on its own, right? So I actually get to divide out all of this whole thing, everything in brackets here, right? So I'm going to divide both sides by all of that. I won't, it, I'm running out of room, so I won't write it all multiple times. But the net result here is I'm going to have X is equal to negative 2 log 5. And then now over all of this, right? I divided the whole thing out. So it's going to be over log 4 minus log 5. And that would be my answer, right? And you might say, like, why do we go to all the effort of, like, leaving it with a log? It's good I've just, like, turned that into a number and turned that into a number, like, you know, partway along the way. And you could have, but actually they would have been, um, there would have been some, like, irrational numbers happening in there, right? So this is the most exact. And that's really in the same way that in the radicals unit, we left it as, I don't know, like, 2 plus root 2 over you know, three or something, and we leave it that way because it's more exact. Same thing with logs. So maybe on a diploma or on a test or something else, your A, B, C, and D, your answers will actually look like this. So it kind of forces you to actually do the, the algebra part of it as well. So, so that's my answer. I'm going to leave it like that. If I put it all in, I'd end up with some decimal, right? But okay, next one. All right, so this one now here so let's we're going to do the same little trick we're going to say log log of and i'm just going to do them both right so it's going to be log of two times three to the power of x plus four okay so i took the log of the left side now i'll take the log of the other side and this will be you know what i'm going to do though um i'm going to show you guys a little trick while we're doing this one now i could Go log of, you know, seven to the power of X over two. That, that, that'd be fine. That would work out. You know, like you could, we'd, we'll do the same thing that we did before. But what my little, uh, my, my nifty little trick here is going to be is this. If I made it log base seven of seven, then you could imagine when this thing comes back down again, right? Down to the front when I do that in a minute. Then I've got log base seven of seven. Then log base seven of seven is one. That just kind of makes it nice. It makes it so I've got like less stuff to deal with, right? Because now I'm, that, that this whole thing will just disappear. That's like one less log statement I have to deal with. Okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make log base seven, but then I have to make them both log base seven to make this work out, right? So in your calculator, just make sure you're putting the base seven part of it in as well when you do it, okay? If, if, you, figured, if you were figuring out what the number was. All right, so that's what we're going to do this. So that, that'll be our little trick for this one. Um, okay. Now, I'm going to split this up because here is one of our, this is one of our log laws, right? I'm multiplying those. So I could write this a little different. I could write this as log base 7 of 2. And then multiplying means we add. So log base 7 of 2 plus log base 7 of 3 to the power of x plus 4. And that's equal to, and then here, I'll just leave it this way for a second and I'll bring them all down in a second here. So that'll be log base seven of seven to the power of X over two. All right, now let's bring everything down up front that we can. So this one will stay the way it is. So I'll just write that again. So log base seven of two plus, and now I get to bring my exponent down. That was the whole point, right? That's why I did this whole log stuff is because I need that exponent down in the, the main level. So this will be x plus 4 times log base 7 of 3. And then that's equal to, and then here's the magical part. This comes back down again. That's x over 2, right? So x over 2 is now on the main level. And then log base 7 of 7, right? That's saying 7 to the power of what is 7? 
right? That's one, right? So that turned that into a one, but I don't even need to write that. So I got rid of that whole log statement there. Made things a little easier. Okay, so now I'll have to expand it. So again, I'm just gonna write it all again. Log base seven of two plus, and then I'm gonna expand this one in. So we'll have X times log seven of three plus four log base seven of three. And then that is all equal to X over two. Okay. Now, same, same thing we did in the last one. I'm gonna get all my X's to one side and all my numbers to the other. And I know there's logs in here, so you're like, what, what's numbers and what's, what's X's, right? So this, right? There's no X, there's no variable in there and there's no variable in there. Those are just my constant terms, right? So that's what I'm gonna to get to the one side. So let's move those, maybe the, it doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm gonna move those to the, to the right side and I'll keep my X's on the left. So I'm gonna rewrite this as X log base seven of three right, just this term. And then I'm gonna bring the x over two over, so that'll be minus x over two. And then is equal to, and I'm gonna move the other ones over. So this will be now negative, just this term, right, but on the other side, so negative log base seven of two, and then bringing this one over. So and then minus four log base seven of three. Okay, so there you go, so you got that one. Now, we're gonna do our same little nifty trick we did in the last one, where if I want X on its own, the way I can get it on its own here, and, and keeping my, um, my most accurate answer, is gonna be to factor out the X. So I'm gonna factor out my X there, start a bracket, and then write what I have left. So I'm gonna have log base seven of three, minus, and then all I would have left here is a half. Right, one over two, I took the X out. And then that's equal to negative log base seven of two minus four log base seven of three. Okay, and then the very last step is to take this whole chunk. I'm gonna divide both sides by that, right? So in the end, really, I'm just moving it to the bottom of that side, right? So I'm gonna get X is equal to negative log base seven of two minus four log base seven of three over um, log base seven of three minus a half. Ah, gross, eh? <laughs> and then there, there are ways too, right? That you, you can change this up. Like this will be the answer. If I put that in, I'm gonna get the right answer, right? That's it. But that could be simplified too, right? So we, we know things about log laws that I could put this four, you know, back up here. And then I've got log base seven, log base seven, and I'm subtracting. So I could write that as like log base seven of two over three, right? Using our log laws. And, you know, I could write that. I could, well, actually I could combine the bottom one too if you're a little clever about it too. But um, yeah, I just want you to know that like this is the right answer, but there's multiple forms that the right answer can take, right? Like it could it could be simplified, it could be written different, but that that be that would be good enough for us. That would be that would be a right answer. So okay, moving on. Okay, so now this this one's a little bit different now, right? So these ones were exponents, and we took the log of both sides to solve for the exponents. Now the way these ones are working is we actually have the the x or the the variable inside the log statement. So we need to get that out of there. We need to like, we need to get it out of this log, right? It's like trapped inside that log right now. I don't know how to deal with that yet. So I need to get it out of there. So here's how we're gonna get it out of there. We are, well, you can think about it this way too, is that you've got log base four and log base four. The, the net result here is that they're gonna cancel, right? They're gonna cancel with each other on both sides. But here's why this works, is because if I went four to the power of all of this, right? four to the power of all of this and four to the power of all of that. Well, if I go four to the power of log four, you can think about those guys as being inverse operations, right? They cancel each other out. So if I go four to the power of log four, I'm going to end up with just five X plus one, right? It gets rid of all of it. 
So I'm going to have just 5x plus 1 is equal to, and then the same thing happens here, 4 to the power of log base 4. Those was like cancel, right? They're inverse operations of each other. And then we end up with just x plus 17. Okay. And then just solving this quickly, you'd end up with 4x is equal to 16. And then x is equal to 4. All right. Now, the only thing that you guys need to, well, there's lots of things, I guess, but like one of the things you should like, you need to watch out for with these ones though, where you've got a log of something, is there's actually restrictions on these guys. When I take log, so logs can't be negative. They're not going to be a negative number. And let's just see why that makes sense for a second too. If I had like log base two of let's say, something, I'll say X is equal to um, two or something, right? Well, that's saying like two to the power of two is four, right? Let's see if we can ever get a negative number out of this, right? So maybe log base two of, of um, let's say like negative two. Well, that would be two to the power of negative two. That doesn't give me a negative number. That just gives me one over four, right? That just gives me a different number like a smaller, like closer to zero number, I'm never going to be able to get a negative number out of that, right? So our restriction here is that logs are ne never negative and they're never zero. There's no number that I could, uh, that like if I had log base two, whatever is equal to something here, I'm never going to be able to turn this into zero either because even if this was zero, right? Two to the power of zero is one, right? I, there's nothing I can put in there that's going to give me a zero out of that too, or as well, right? So it has to be greater than. So our restrictions on these guys are going to be, well, let's, we have to do them both. We'll say 5x plus 1, right? Just this part inside the log. I know that that has to be greater than zero. Not greater than or equal to. It has to be greater than zero because it can't be zero. All right. And then if you solve for that, just doing, doing our simple algebra step, right? You get x has to be greater than negative 17. Oh, sorry, not negative 17. I got ahead of myself. Um, you're probably wondering what I was talking about there. X is greater than negative one over five. That probably makes more sense, right? Okay, now if you did the same thing for the other one, then we get X plus 17 has to be greater than zero. So X has to be greater than negative 17, right? So both of these things have to be true, but Really, in the end, though, this is the one, right? Because if it has to be greater than negative one over five, then yeah, this one's almost kind of obsolete. I don't even care about that one. Greater than negative 17, it can't be negative 16 either, right? So, or sorry, yeah, it can't, yeah, it can't be that either because, because of this restriction. So, either anyway, anyway, in the end, I need to look at these because if my answer would have ended up being, let's say, like negative two then that wouldn't have worked. It would have been a, an extraneous solution or you'd say, yeah, say like no answer, right? Okay, so for each of these, we have to check the restrictions too. All right, next one. So, all right, let's even just do our restrictions first now. All right, because of this guy, right? I'm multiplying. Okay, so it has to be just X has to be greater than zero, right? Just for that one alone. And now that one, X would have to be greater than um, negative one, or sorry, one, I should say. Okay, so really X has to be greater than one. Even though we had this one that was X has to be greater than zero, it can't be 0 0.5, right? It has to be bigger than one because of this restriction. Okay, so going off of that, let's say, well, well we can solve these different ways. The best way when you can here, when you have this type of a situation where you've got log base or log 5x minus log yada yada yada, we want to combine these guys before we get going. If you can, you want to combine them, okay? So these are all, it's really like base 10 and base 10, right? So I can use my log laws to combine these guys. So in this case, this is going to be log, you know, base 10 if you like, of... And then remember how this works. This is 5x, and then I'm subtracting, which is the same thing in here as dividing. So 5x over x minus 1. 
right? So writing that as a single log. And now that's equal to one. Okay, so I've combined those. Now, again, there's, there's, a mul there's multiple ways to think about this one. I'm gonna show you both. Now, if I wanna get this stuff out of here, right? 5x and then the x minus one. Well, one way of doing it is to, you know, doing it the, the way we, we've talked about, just changing it to an exponential form. This is log base 10, right? So 10 to the power of this one is equal to that one, right? So 10 to the power of one is equal to 5x over x minus one, okay? So that works, that, that makes sense. But I also want you to notice that we would have got the same answer if we did our last little trick I was showing you before. If I went 10 to the power of all of this, right? And 10 to the power of one, right? I go 10 to the power of everything on both sides. Well, watch what happens. You go 10 to the power of log base 10, that's just five X over X minus one, okay? And then on the other side, 10 to the power of one is just 10. So you get the same thing, right? It doesn't matter how you, how you think about it there, but I just want to show that they both work. Okay, so now, now in that case, we're just doing straight algebra now, right? So I'm gonna bring this up to the other side. So we get five X is equal to 10 and then X minus one. I'm gonna distribute that. So we get five X is equal to 10 X minus 10. And then we're going to, um, I'll bring the X's over to the right side, just to keep them positive. So we end up with, we end up with five uh, X is equal to 10. So then in the end, X is equal to two. And then just, we'll check our restrictions. We, get, we got X is equal to two. Yeah, our restriction here was X had to be greater than one. So that fits, so we're still good. All right, last, last one of these guys and then and then we got a bunch more, so. <laughs> um, you know what? Just for the sake of time here, this one's very much, like it's a lot like the others. I might, oh, actually, the, the only thing here, cut to the gist, this one is a lot like the one we just did, but in the end here, you end up getting, you end up getting like negative 6.26 or something. And the restriction here, was that X had to be greater than three, right? So it also had to be greater than negative six, but greater than three kind of takes precedence there. So in the end, this was an extraneous solution, okay? So yeah, I'll, I'll, you, got, you guys can do that one if you want, just for more practice. It's, it's done just like this one, but just the solution doesn't work out with the restrictions. But I'm gonna skip forward just for the sake of time here, because we got some other ones to go through too, so. Okay. So as we start moving into this part, we're into the applications part of it, right? So this is really the science part of it. Where does this come in? And if any of you guys have taken chemistry, you've probably seen this, the, the pH scale. Okay, so we're gonna go through the pH scale and then we're gonna go through the Richter scale and then we're gonna go through um, like the, the decibel scale, right, for sound. And that's, pr those, that's pretty much it for, for 30-1. Like those are the, the main examples that we, that we use. And it's because they're common logarithmic scale, their scales. Okay, so the pH scale. So pH is, is a measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions, right? So like extra little hydrogen atoms floating around, right? Like how many extras are there? So it's, it's that in a solution. So the greater the concentration of hydrogen ions, the lower the pH. So a pH between zero and seven refers to an acidic pH. And seven is neutral, they say. And then a pH between seven and 14, they call basic. So pH can be found using this formula. So it looks a little confusing, especially this stuff in the middle, but this is really saying pH is equal to negative log of, and then this is just a number, right? All of this in here, this is just stands for aqueous, um, like in an aqueous solution. Um, this is just a number in there, right? So it's not that crazy of, a, of, a, of an equation, but all right, so here, here's your question. All right. Um, okay, so it says in spring, the pH of the water in a mountain stream is 4.2. And it says it's 90.5 times more acidic 
um, in the fall. Determine the pH of water in the fall. Okay, so here's the idea here, is that when it says uh, pH, I find in these questions, it's, it's a little, just figuring out what these numbers are relative to like what, what the equation is. So it says the pH of water is 4.2. So that is a pH, right? That's telling us the pH level. Now, when it says it's 90.5 times more acidic, that doesn't mean that the pH level here is 90 times bigger than the other one because pH is on like a, it's called a logarithmic scale, which makes more sense probably now that we're doing this for you guys. But, but what it means, it means it's 90 times, it has 90 times like more concentration, right? It's got not, like this number is 90 times bigger than the other one, right? So 90 times more acidic than in the fall. It says determine the pH of the water in the fall. Okay, so what you can say here is that for, for this 90.5 part of it, you could say the hydrogen concentration in the spring, right, which is just a number, over the hydrogen concentration in the fall, right, like divided by, if I take the, the concentration in the spring and divide it by the concentration in the fall, that should get me 90.5, right? It's 90.5 times bigger, okay? Now, another way of writing this is just rearranging this equation is so I, I could say that the, I'll write it more like the way it was up here, hydrogen concentration, I'll just say S for spring, is equal to 90.5, times the hydrogen concentration in the fall, so F. It's, it's just this equation just written different, right? Okay, well, if that's true, then we know they've actually told us, um, well, actually, oh, I'm actually ashamed to say that. Let's, for a second, so this was our equation. What we're gonna wanna do here, and in, in these ones in general, quite often, clean this up, is rewrite this in um, exponential form. Okay, so if I'm rewriting this in exponential form, I'm gonna, first step, I'm gonna get rid of this negative by dividing both sides by like negative one, but either way, this becomes negative pH is equal to log of, and I'm gonna make it log of, you know, the hydrogen concentration there. Now, rewriting this as an exponential equation, right? This is log base 10, remember. That, so I could write this all again as 10 to the power of negative pH is equal to the hydrogen concentration. Okay, so that means the same thing. Okay, so if I'm talking about the hydrogen concentration in the spring, well, that could be rewritten as 10 to the power of negative pH, right? Because that's what we just said above. Um, but we've been given our pH, right? We know what it is in the spring. It's 4.2, so I can say negative 4.2, right? That's what, that was our um, pH for the spring. Okay, so now that is equal to 90.5 times, now this is what I'm looking for. I'd actually like to figure out what the hydrogen concentration of is in the fall, because once I know that, then I can just use the formula to figure out the pH. Okay, so I'm gonna, just write it like that again for a second, H positive in the fall. And then these are all just numbers. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 90.5, divide by 90, 90.5. And if you do that, you end up getting um, 6.97 times 10 to the negative seven. And that's equal to the hydrogen concentration in the fall. Okay, so we're part way there because now all we have to do is put it back into the formula, right? So if I wanna, so remember the formula was this, pH is equal to, and then I can just insert the hydrogen concentration that I found for the fall, right? So let's, let's do that part now. So we'll say the pH for the fall, if you like, just F or whatever, just to remind yourself what you're, what you're looking for, is equal to, negative log of, of 6.97 times 10 to the negative seven. 
And that all ends up giving you a pH of 6.2. Okay, so now I think it's worth, like, so that's how you answer those questions, but I think it's worth actually just talking about this formula a little more here for a second. So remember how I rewrote that equation there as 10 to the power of negative pH, and that's equal to the concentration, right? That means the same thing. So that's like the amount of hydrogen, right? I think it's worth talking about the numbers that we put in here. So on the pH scale, you know, it's, it could be like two or three, you know, it could be like eight or nine. If it was two, that means it was, it, was, it was acidic, right? Let's actually just throw a two into this for a second, just to give you an idea. That would be 10 to the power of negative like two, right? And that's telling you what the hydrogen concentration would be. That should be acidic. So what does that mean? That means that the concentration here would be the same thing as, as one over um, 100, right? And now what does that mean? I can look at it as a fraction now. You could say the hydrogen concentration here is one, one um, hydrogen ion for every hundred other molecules, right? That's telling you how concentrated it is, okay? Now, if I threw in like 10 to the power of negative and I put in like something that's supposed to be basic, so let's say like I don't know, 10 or something, okay? Well, that is telling you that you've got one over and then one with 10 zeros you know, all the zeros there, right? That's a lot less concentrated. So that's what it means if something's basic. It, do, it doesn't have very many free hydrogen ions floating around. But when something's basic, it has quite a lot in comparison, right? So that, that's what that's telling you there, right? Okay, Richter scale. Okay, so the Richter scale is also logarithmic. They all are <laughs> for, for right now. And it's the magnitude of an earthquake is going to be the log of the intensity of the earthquake. And then what this is, is like your baseline intensity. And why, we're, why this makes sense here is that, so your intensity is like literally like how much shaking is happening, right? So that's how much shaking is happening. And then your baseline intensity, why we have to take this into account is because you might think that like when there's not an earthquake happening, that um, the ground's not shaking at all. But it actually is like if you were actually to look at a seismometer, you, you'd actually see like, you know, it's still waving even now. Right. But if there's an earthquake, it would it would you know jump up and down quite a lot. Right. OK, so what we have to do is be, uh, have like a place that we're starting. And I, th I think it would actually be helpful to think about this equation a little different. You could also write this as M is equal to log base I. So like the log of the intensity of the earthquake. And then remember with your log laws that you could write that as log as, as minus, right? If you're dividing, it'd be subtract your initial one. So what this means is that if this, if my initial was like my baseline, what I, cho what I chose to call zero, right? Then really what I'm finding when I do this is the difference between those, right? I'm finding that like the change in the log of intensity, right? So that's what it really is that you're finding. And that's the need. That's why we have this need for like our, our base and line intensity. Okay. You don't, you don't have to write it out like this, but what the, what's going to happen essentially all the time when we start doing these questions is that the baseline intensity is going to cancel out. So it's not really going to be an issue in a second, but, but that's why it's there. All right. So, um, again, let's, let's for the, to begin with here, let's rewrite this in exponential form. So this is like log base 10, right? So this, I could rewrite this whole thing as 10 to the power of M is equal to I divided by IO, right? So that, that would be the same thing, okay? So notice that too, when I'm going through all these logarithmic scale things, we're always solving for an exponent. That's what it is, right? Our scales actually are the exponent, like, what, like when you're doing the Richter scale or the, or the decimal scale or anything else in, in a minute here. Okay, so here's an example. So we've got the, uh, the strongest earthquake in Alberta was 4.4 on the Richter scale. It says, how much stronger is the strongest earthquake in the world if it measures 9.5 on the Richter scale? Okay, so let's use our equation here. So it was M is equal to log of I over IO and to get my bearings here, I'm gonna, well, we're not gonna have to anyway. I'm gonna rewrite this in exponential form. So again, this was log base 10. So this would be 10, the power of M 
is equal to the stuff in the middle there, right? So I over I O. All right. Now, what I would actually like to do is figure out an equation for, for I, right? Because this is like intensity for, let's say, Alberta. I'm doing this one, just Alberta first, okay? So if I rearrange this, I get 10 to the power of, and maybe I should put this in the last one, right? I, they told me what the, what the Richter scale um, was, right? So that's going to be 4.4. So 4.4 times IO is equal to the intensity for Alberta. Okay, so that's like my equation number one. If you see where I'm going with this. So that's like equation number one, right? I did that for Alberta. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it for the world, right? Like the, the biggest one in the world. So it's exactly the same thing. It's gonna be, you know, we'll start off with 10 to the power of 9.5 this time is equal to the intensity for the world over IO, because IO is the same for both. Okay, so now just rearranging that, we get 10 to the power of 9.5 times IO is equal to the intensity for the world, okay? So we're, we're really almost there, actually, because they, they just ask us how many, or how much stronger, and really, I think if, if this was better, you guys will see the word like times a lot, like how many times stronger is it? That, that's what it's after. When it says how much stronger, it means how, how, like what multiple stronger is it, right? So that's what we're after there. So the way we're going to do this, if I want to figure out like how much bigger, let's say six was than two, well, I would go six divided by two. It's three times bigger, right? We're going to do the same thing with these. So I'm going to say how many times bigger is the world one than the, than the Alberta one? So I'm going to say the intensity of the world divided by the intensity of Alberta, that would be how many times bigger it is, right? So that IW over IA, that's the same thing as saying um, 10 to the power of 9.5 times IO over 10 to the power of 4.4 IO, right? Because that, that, like, that is IW and that is IA, right? So dividing those should give me my answer. And nicely enough, our, our initial intensities cancel, right? They're the same for both. It kind of makes sense that they would cancel. So they cancel. So here's my expression. I've just got a number over a number. Now it would work just to put in your calculator, 10 to the power of 9.5 um, divided by 10 to the power of 4.4. Or you could do the same thing and say IW over IA is equal to That'd be the same thing as 10 to the power of, and then if you're dividing exponents, you can subtract. So 9.5 minus 4.4. So that would be equal to 10 to the power of 5.1. Okay, so now to give us a sense of how big that is, if you actually put that into your calculator, you get this number, 125,893 which is intense because <laughs> um, that's how many times bigger it is, right? Like normally two times bigger than something is quite a lot bigger. It's twice the size. On the Richter scale, they're saying it's 125,893 times as intense, right? That's way more intense. So that's something to know this, that the difference between 9.5 and 4.4 wasn't very big. Right. But if I'm talking like exponential, like it, because, because that's what they are, like on the Richter scale, right? Where you're actually talking about your exponents, it's huge. Right. And actually, the way it works, just to give you a, just to rem, um, the sense of this too, like on a, on a simpler form, if I had something that was like, let's say five on the Richter scale, so 10 to the power of five, and like, let's say four on the Richter scale, so 10 to the power of four. And if I said, how many times bigger was it? Well, even though, if, so if it was the difference, so five and four on the Richter scale, you're like, okay, well, that's not much of a difference. But if I go 10 to the power five divided by 10 to the power four, that's equal to 10. That means it's 10 times, it's 10 times more, more intense, right? Um, and if I had, let's say, something that was five on the Richter scale and something that was three on the Richter scale, well, that would actually be 100 times more intense. 
And you can see where I'm going with this, right? If I had 10, 10 to the five and 10 to the two, that's a thousand times more intense. And that's how these logarithmic scales work, right? With base 10, they go up by, they add a zero every time. So it goes up exponentially. All right, last one. So decibel level. So the intensity of sound is measured with uh, something called decibels, right? That's how loud something is. So the formula for the loudness of sound is, is this, which it actually is the same equation pretty much that, as the other ones as well. Because if I just rewrite this for a second as L over 10, right? Like divide both sides by 10, that's equal to log of I over I O, right? So it's the same, it's like set up the same way. Um, decibels, it's actually on the bell scale and a decibel is just, um, yeah, divided by 10 for a decibel, right? That's, that's all it is, so. Okay, so it's gonna be very similar here now where, well, here, let's just do this question. So it says, a portable music player can produce sounds of up to 125 decibels. Any sound above 90 decibels uh, can cause hearing loss if exposed, their exposure is prolonged. To be safe, experts suggest that the volume does not exceed 60% of the maximum that the player can produce. Assuming your player is at maximum, how many times more intense is this than the recommended setting? All right, so I know that was a little confusing, but all that we're saying, all that we're doing here is we're gonna say, okay, if we have something that, something that is at 125 decibels, that's like the max volume, and it says that to be safe, we're supposed to have 60% of that, right? So that's like the recommended volume. We didn't even really need the 90, right? They were just kind of throwing that in there to throw us off, I guess. But anyway, not, it's, it's part of the question. So anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure out how many times bigger the max is than the recommended, okay? So let's do the, I'll do the recommended first. And if I wanna figure out the recommended volume, I gotta figure out what 60% of 125 is. So here, the recommended, I'm gonna say recommended, is 0 0.6 times 125, right? That's just figuring out 60% of 125. So that's 75 decibels. Okay, so now our equation is L is equal to 10 log of I over I O. All right, so now I'd like to get this in the form where it's an exponent. I don't like the log. So in these questions, we want to change it into I, like I is equal to something. So I need that I out of there. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10 first. So divide by 10. And then just to save room here, just because I'm running out of room here too at the same time, is I'm going to rewrite this now as, as an exponent. So I'm gonna write this as 10 to the power of L over 10, right? 10 to the power of this. And that's equal to, and then just the inside here. So that'll be I over I O. And then just getting I by itself, and maybe I'll call this I R for I record, or not record, I, I recommended. So recommended. So this would be the same thing as 10 to the power of L over 10 times I O. And again, I O is just our baseline. So it's gonna, it's, it'll cancel out. Okay, so there is our equation number one. Now we're gonna do it for the, for the other one. So for, for the max, right? So I'll make this one our max volume. All right, so this one, again, so here I'll just write down the equation again. L is equal to, actually L, L over 10 is equal to, log I M over I O. That's just our original equation with the 10 already divided out. Okay, so now again, we're gonna rewrite this and maybe the last one I lost you, I'm not sure. All I did there was, this is like log base 10, right? So it's like 10 to the power of this is equal to the middle, right? Or you could say 10, like make both, raise both sides, go 10 to the power of that side and that side. Either way, what you end up with is 10 to the power of the exponent there. Oh, shoot. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I forgot to put a number in. My bad, guys. On the last one here, this should have been the number 7.5, 7 right? It was 75 decibels. 
So that would have been, sorry, I'm making a jumper around everywhere. That should have been like 75 over 10. So that'd be the same thing as 7.5, right? I should have had that in there. And now we're going to do the same thing here where I'm going to put in um, 125, right? So this would be 125 over 125 over 10 is equal to log base 10 of I M over I O. And then now, now I'll do, I'll go to the power of, so 125 over 10 is 12.5. So that'll be 10 to the power of 12.5 is equal to, and then just the inside now. So then now that's just going to be I M over I O. And now I'll just write the IO up top. So that's going to be 10 to the power of 12.5 times IO is equal to I M. All right. Now it's just saying how many, how many times more intense is it than the recommended setting? Okay. So now we just need to set it up right, right? So it's just like the last one. How many times more intense? Well, so that just means I'm going to go I max, right? I am um, divided by I recommended, right? That would tell me how many times more intense it is. So now that's going to be the maximum was 10 to the power of 12.5 times IO. And then the recommended was 10 to the power of 7.5 times IO. And again, our IOs will cancel. So this will give us, um, well, I can just subtract these, right? 12.5 minus 7.5, that'd be the same thing as 10 to the power of five. So another way of writing that would be um, 100,000. So it's 100,000 times stronger. Okay, so I know that was a long one and kind of an intense one too, right? Um, hopefully, that hopefully that made sense. But uh, yeah, th this is the that's why it's the last lesson. It's definitely probably one of the harder ones. But 